Brought to you by DCP Player version 2, available now. Now supporting SMPTE DCPs with frame rates such as 24, 25, 30, 48, 50 and 60 frames per second and early support for HFR high frame rate 96, 100 and 120 frames per second 3D. Get it now at digital.net.au Hello, this is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek and today I want to cover digital cinema and screen brightness and to be exact what you should expect on 2D and 3D screens. So let's get into it. Now what I'm going to cover today is the following. I'm going to do basically cover the 2D standards and information about that, the 3D standards. Um, 3D still has a lot of problems of course. How your eyes work. Now this is the most important part of the presentation. It explains the problems here or the, the deeper problems of, of brightness and how it's an issue with 3D. And at the end, of course, I'll ex that'll explain why projecting at the des a design brightness level is so important. So hopefully we get to the end and you'll understand all that. Now, 2D brightness standards. Now, Cindy is 16 foot lambits. Um, over here, it's generally 14, they aim for. Uh, I've also got the, the standards from Europe there, which my European friends wanted me to mention. And it's interesting to, to mark there the 70, the 70 to 90 percent at the at the extremities of the screen as part of the standard. That's basically before, if you look at the very bottom, the um, the 12, the uh, 1.2 to 1.4 gain. So even though you're using 2D, 2D, they usually use a, a pearl screen or a high gain screen. So you still can get some of the hot spotting in the middle, but it's far less reduced compared to a, a silver screen where the gain is over two. It's very, very high. Um, but it still can occur, so that's why the, the standard allows for that sort of um, uh, drop off on the edges. Now, the projectors, um, digital projectors, uh, were, a lot of them were developed when 3D was coming out and 3D required a lot of brightness. So, generally, getting the 14 foot lamps, they're pretty much over engineered and achieving that light level is pretty easy. It's not a problem at all. Um, the only thing you need to know about uh, 2D, a uh, significant problem, is that 2D lam or lamps in general, they do degrade over time. So pretty much in the last 20%, they degrade quite quickly, uh, about 20%, depends on the lamp. But um, some projectors, or well, some projectors do have, uh, or all of them do actually have light meters in them, so they can actually measure the amount of light coming out. Uh, it's not it's not relative to the screen, because you don't know what the screen size is, but they can use that... Um, light meter um, measurement to uh, sustain the brightness over the life of the lamp by, for example, if the light starts to go low, the projector can automatically raise the power to the lamp to keep it bright, or keep it at the same brightness for the, for the life of the lamp. So 2D is pretty much sorted. So let's get into the, into the problems with 2D very quickly. Uh, in general, like I said, there's no problems with 2D. It's, it's pretty much sorted, but there are problems in relation to 3D uh, because um, proje projecting 2D content on a 3D design system has inherent problems. For example, the high grain silver screen, and that's affecting your 2D performance. Of course, um, if you've got a, a real a real D or any other active system in front of the lens, uh, if you're going to do a 2D display, it has to be removed somehow, and that's sometimes been neglected, and they're just shining it through the 3D system, on, even on a 2D um, um, presentation. So that's quite a, a problem. Um, there's even deeper problems for some, for example, the Sony have quite a large problem in that the, the actual 3D system is part of the lens. So to remove it is, is very involved. You actually have to get an engineer to remove the lens and install a 2D lens. So it's not going to happen in the field. Uh, so uh, that's led to a few problems in the media where the, the, the light level on the screen has been lower than it should be for the 2D screens. But it's just we need to take a little bit more care and probably design what what films are going to what screen more efficiently, like the 3D standard 3D screens and the 2D uh, on the 2D screens. Um, with uh, again with that issue, if you do have a 3D design system, it actually can be quite difficult to get the light level down to 16 foot lambits, especially if you're using a very inefficient 3D system like the Dolby, or the, there's quite a few there that are more efficient. So, if you need to dial it back, sometimes you can't, can't actually dial it back enough to, to get down to that level. That's a little bit of a problem, but it's you know a bit brighter. It's not the, not the end of the world. Um, 
and like I said, projecting on silver screen. So let's jump over to the 3D brightness standards. Now, there's a few, and there's reasons for that. Um, 3.5, 6, and 10. Um, 3.5 in the early days, it was very hard to get over 4 at all when 3D just started. So 3.5 was a common standard uh, used around, uh, and it's still used in those cinemas today because it's usually when they're installed and set up for a certain level, that's the way they stay. And that was how it was done installed back then, so that's how they are today. But in general, um, we're more going to a six foot lambert, it's a much better brightness um, to go for. It's much more the, the patrons or the movie goers, it's much better for them. They definitely appreciate that extra brightness. But really, uh, IMAX sets for 10 foot lambits, and, and James Cameron's demonstration at CinemaCon last year was that we need to get to 10 foot lambits. And I, I do agree with him, it does look fantastic when I saw that presentation. 10 foot lambits does really make it um, pop a lot more and make it more realis realistic and 3D. That's one, one thing about 3D, the more realistic it is, the better it is for us and our brains and our headaches if possible, you're gonna get one. So let's move on. 3D problems, again, because you've got the different foot, different brightnesses, uh, and due to the fact that uh, the way 3D works and how your eyes work, which we'll get into after this, that would mean you need three different grades or three different masters uh, of the same film. So dual or more inventory, that's a problem. The, the ISDCF and the, and the studios have specifically been trying very hard so they don't need to do dual inventory because it just leads to problems and costs and all those costs travel on to the exhibitors. So it's something we want to try and move away from. Um, the fact that there's more than one copy of the same film can lead to errors showing the wrong film or with the wrong brightness on your system or getting the wrong key for the wrong, C, the wrong C, DCP or CPL that you've got for the system. Errors leading to fault, you know, just problems can occur. Wrong cadence, etc. 3.5, of course, is not like why many, a lot of people think it's too, too dim. I, I'd have to agree. So, now yeah, we want to move away from that. Um, if there is any problems with your lamp, or you know, like I said, lamps do degrade over time, it's harder for the projectors to deal with it when they're already trying pushing very hard, especially if we're already at 3.5 foot lambits. If we're getting hit with any more um, lowering of that quality, it's just difficult. It's, it's a difficult situation. Now, let's get into our eyes and how they work. Now, this is an important aspect of to explain to you why this is such an important issue. Um, so in this picture here we've got the rods and cones, this is a, a very close look at how the, the, the back of our eyes. And here we have um, an example of the rods and cones in the eyes and you can see here rods pick up detail and the cones pick up detail and colour. Alright, so we get on to that. Now we've got some images here to help you understand how that affects our sight on 3D on the screen. So if we've got rods and cones here, and we've sort of got three different, um, they call it scotopic, and that's very dark, mes mesopic, when it's like in the evening, etc., where there's some light around but not a lot, and then photopic, when there's plenty of light around during the day, right? So you can see here there's a there's a time when you in the, you know, the evening, etc., where you're actually using your rods and cones to achieve your image. And this is the, what these images over here indicate. So it's fully bright in this time of day, and we've got the photopic image here, fully you know, vibrant, saturated colours, fantastic. But 3D, it's, you can't achieve the 14 foot lamp that's quite dark, so we're actually in this mesopic zone here. Right? So we're actually using quite a lot of rods, and the combination of the cones, the rods giving us the, the detail, and the cones giving us a little bit of the colour. Right? And then, of course, when we're straight in the very dark, we've just got a black and white sort of uh, view here. So we'll just look at here. Um, there's an explanation down here uh, of what those different zones do. And then let's have a look at where the cinema brightness is sort of fall in on those areas. So 14 foot lamb, it's just straight up here in the photopic zone. It's full brightness, full clarity, full colour. 6.5, 3.5 to 6. Now, sitting in the mes mesopic zone, where we've got different levels, so 3.5 might be here and 6.5 might be here. 
So at those two different levels, you'll get different amounts of rods and cones working together at those two different brightnesses. So as that will be the case, the saturation of this flower would be different at those two levels of brightness. But if I'm going to regrade the content for a particular brightness, so that now it's going to be projected at a particular brightness, I might oversaturate or adjust that grade or the colours in the film to make up for that, right? So if I've graded it for 3.5, it might look right at 6. It might look right at 10, right? This is where the problem lies with projecting 3D content at the right brightness. So then we get to the 10-foot Lambert, which is at the bottom of the photopic. That's why um, James Cameron and IMAX sort of aim for that, that zone because um, that's when our eyes are all working rough, roughly the same. Also, like, like everyone's is a different height, um, the amount of rods and cones working at these levels for every person is probably slightly different too. So we might slightly see colours slightly different in those zones. So we want to all try and be in the, in the photopic zone when we see stuff on the screen. Um, so, must project at designed light levels. I hope you're understanding why that's so important now after that demonstration with the, with the graphs and the images. Just go over what we said, 3D in mesoscopic zone. Uh, mesoscopic combination of the rods and cones, different light levels activate rods and cones at different amounts, and that's why at different light levels we need different grades. So it's a must project at designed light level or colours wrong. So, important. We must understand this. So what do we do about 3D light issues? Well, we could follow the lead of IMAX and James Cameron and head to 10 foot lambdas, which is basically at the bottom of the photopic sort of range. Uh, to achieve that, like IMAX do, does, we could do a two projector 3D systems. Um, I personally think that will probably be common in a, a premium sort of service that a lot of cinemas may offer in the future, uh, especially with the, the James Cameron, you know, like, like Avatar 2 and uh, maybe even Hobbit because uh, that would produce the best possible results and that, I think that's a good marketing advantage that you could go for for some cinema owners or chains. Uh, new laser light engine could be the answer. The laser light engines is demonstrating here uh, earlier on this year by Barco and I'm sure it'll be at CinemaCon this year. Uh, much brighter capabilities so it might have some sort of answers. I'm, I'm not very clear on it yet but it's definitely something to keep an eye on and look at. Um, another area that's helping us with this is um, you've got the DCP naming convention. Well, that's currently under review and they're making some changes changes to it. And one of those changes is to move a lot of that data into the metadata of the CPL and more detailed and more explanatory rather than all those codes that you have to look up on the, on the naming convention website. And one of those bits of metadata is going to be what brightness should this be projected at? So it'll be clear as mar well, it'll be clear for you on the screen of your DCP player, um, DCP media players soon of what brightness that should be. So that should help with this this type of problem. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found this interesting uh, and that gives you opens your eyes to why brightness in 3D is such an issue and why a lot of effort is put into it, and uh, and you know and why you should take a lot more care with presenting and projecting your 3D features. Thank you for watching. This is James Gardner, the Cinetech Geek. Bye for now.